Hey, what's up, you guys? What do you take up here? What do you take up here? Meeting my icon, Catherine Isabel, Dan Lorenzo. Wait, what did you say? Dan Lorenzo. Guys, better subscribe and watch my friend on his YouTube channel. He is kicking ass. Hey, what's up you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you another review. This time I'll be talking about The Walking Dead Season 9, Episode 4, The Obliged. So I really want to apologize for uh, how I missed the reviews of the previous two episodes I reviewed the premiere. Then I just fell back and uh, missed uh, getting my reviews out on time for uh, the other two uh, recent episodes. Um, but I really wanted to get back on it because we have uh, episode 5 coming next Sunday. Um, apparently, you know, Andrew Link and Rick Grimes, you know, final episode uh, publicized for the past couple months and everything. Um, I, I'm still not ready. There's like a couple handfuls of different ideas of how it's going to happen or what's going to happen. It's going to be killed off via helicopter. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm prepared for the worst though. And it's going to be rough. It's going to hit me with however they do it or whatever they do. Um, because, you know, sure, The Walking Dead, I, my favorite seasons are probably the first few. I've said that before. Um, but still, what's held it up for me all these years and kept it one of my all-time favorite shows is just how incredible Andrew Lincoln has always, always been in the role. Um, in, my, in my opinion, he's given uh, an Emmy-worthy performance every season he's been in. Um, and uh, Rick, I think, is one of the greatest uh, lead TV characters of all time. So, uh, uh, Walking Dead, again, one of my all-time favorite shows. And so to see this... Uh, <laughs> coming to an end it's uh, it's gonna hit. it's gonna hurt <laughs> um but yeah and I, i've been enjoying season nine so far though i think it's been pretty good um and uh, really with the previews for uh, episode five next week that could end up being one of the all-time best episodes um just because of how meaningful and well done it could all be um, but we'll talk about that when the time comes uh i took the day off of work to see it on time <laughs> But I did want to get back to reviewing the show week to week uh, and talk about this episode, uh, which I think is a pretty good one as well. Um, of course, they sort of set us up for that big uh, fifth episode next week at the end. Um, but throughout, it was all pretty good, too. I mean, I, I liked uh, sort of the montage of uh, Michonne's, you know, day-to-day -day routine, um, how monotonous it kind of is, but then she has to sort of, like, let out her frustrations or sort of just... Uh, let that warrior us out, right? As her and, uh, you know, Negan talk about later. And I really like Negan and Michonne's conversation as well. Um, just, you know, really good acting from both, uh, you know, JDM and uh, Denagrera. And, uh, I really hope they go the route with uh, Negan that they do in the comics, because that's gonna be really cool. And, uh, there's an article that said by the end of the season, uh, more of the audience is gonna love Negan, so I hope they sort of go that route they do in the comics. And I think they're going to need it now, especially with Rick being gone. They're going to need another uh, solid character to follow, besides, you know, like Daryl and stuff. But, um, yeah, so I, I enjoyed all that. Uh, and just sort of Negan sort of making a show sort of parallel their own psyches and everything, and how they sort of thrive off of uh, how they survive and, you know, sort of this world in a, in a way. I thought that was really interesting. You know, and again, Negan telling Michonne about his wife. Um, he doesn't uh, delve into it quite as much as he did with Father Gabriel in the uh, you know, previous season, but still, I really enjoyed it, and I think there's going to be more to come. Um, because with Carl gone, they have to instill conversations like this with someone for sure, I think, and I think it's working. 
Um, and of course, the uh, well, we also have Jed turn up, uh, you know, along with these the saviors, and you know, Carol beats his ass and everything like that. Uh, we also get a pretty good conversation between Carol and Rick. What may end up being their last. Um, you know, they just talk about how they both wanted it to work, but you know, Carol just says, you know, it is, and, and that was that was touching as well. And Rick seemed a little bit more emotive in that scene as well. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, but you know, Carol's always respected Rick and everything. I remember even as far back as uh, season three, she commented on how Shane never could have gotten them this far. And it's interesting the promo we got, and uh, you know, for next week's episode again, I keep talking about that. I'm just really eager to see uh, you know John Bernthal return to Shane as you know probably a hallucination of Rick's or something. I just hope they really make it uh, accurate to how. Uh, how it's been sort of mentioned over the past couple of seasons, you know, Rick expressing so much regret and uh, sort of longing for uh, those days with Shane again and, you know, wishing had gone a different way. And, you know, so I hope it's a mix of like that sort of uh, psyche that's been instilled in Rick of, oh, like, you can't keep them safe. But I hope it's a more sort of touching, sort of remorseful, sort of uh, sentimental look back at, you know, the positive of the relationship and wishing something had been different. But again, we'll probably talk about that a little bit more next week. Um, I still did like the Rick and Daryl stuff in this episode as well. Um, Maggie going off to probably try and kill Negan. Uh, Rick trying to get a message relayed to Alexandria and Michonne specifically to give her a heads up. But no, um, they have some of the uh, Ocean Siders or um, some of the others in on it as well to uh, not pass that message along. Um, you know, and uh, Daryl says, oh yeah, come on, jump on, man, I'll get you there. And then he takes him off on a different route. And I like the back and forth, and you can definitely see two, the two different perspectives. Not uh, Rick sort of uh, trying to uh, live up to, there has to be something after, you know, what Carl wanted and everything. Um, and so it, it's hard to say, you know, because you don't know which way it would really go. You can see it going bo both ways for uh, different people that are out there, you know. Maybe some people uh, would just... Uh, you know, they'd see Negan as a martyr and act on that if he were killed. Um, but like Daryl said, the fact that he's still alive gives some hope. <laughs> you know, that maybe we could go back to the way things were. And then Rick says, the fact that he's alive uh, is why it's not, you know. But I don't know. <laughs> um, but really, it's probably, you know, a grim future either way. But unless there, you know, there is some good in Negan. But obviously, I think there's too many people like Jed. Um... And they, of course, get into a physical confrontation and tumble down to a sort of big hole, and I thought that was pretty good. Um, and I, I also like Daryl. This is probably the most dialogue Daryl has had, and I don't know how long. Um, which, uh, they need to give him more with him, uh, you know, sort of uh, taking more of the reins. Uh, but Daryl bringing up Glenn and everything, and uh, how Rick never would have found his family, and all of them if it wasn't for Glenn getting him out of there, you know, back in the pilot episode. Uh, you know, Rick thinks about that every day. I know he does, but you know, Rick, uh, Daryl and Maggie are just angry, and you know, Daryl sort of just emphasizes that he owes that to not just Maggie but Glenn to have that be avenged. Um, so again, you can really see both sides to it. Uh, so I thought that was really good. And then the walkers are falling in, and uh, them trying to sort of climb, climb up with the roots and everything. Um, and a pretty good moment with. Uh, you know, Rick getting to the top first and said, you know, calling your old brother again, you know, take my hand. And it's good to see how they're not just hell bent on killing each other randomly. You know, they're going to disagree, but at the end, they're still, you know, really close. Um, so I like that. And then, of course, the ending. Um, you know, Rick going off to uh, drive off the walkers and everything. Daryl not wanting him to, but, you know, what could go wrong, right? Well, <laughs> the white horse. Uh, which is probably going to be even more symbolic next week, um, gets spooked because there's even more, you know, the herds are coming together and uh, Rick is uh, tossed off um, and he's impaled on like some kind of steel rod or something like that. Um, I forget the exact term for it, but yeah, kind of uh, possibly fatally and he sort of uh, goes unconscious as you see sort of the two separate herds converging towards him. Um, so it's going to wake up in time, so I'm going to pick him up, uh, I don't know. Um, but either way, it's a major, major fucking setup for whatever is going to happen. And I wish I just made it a two-parter, because I just want to see what's going to happen now. Just bite the bullet. Let's see how it goes down. 
Um, but yeah, I'm ready. I, my adrenaline is pumping, uh, nervous, on edge, but very good episode. I'm giving it a 9.2 out of 10, and uh, yeah, like, I'm, like I said, I'm sure if, uh, if the episode is half as good as it seems in the previews next week, it's going to be one of the all-time best episodes of the whole series. So uh, yeah, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, like, subscribe, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.